Hello. In this clip, we derive the IS curve or investment savings curve. The investment saving curve is going to give us those combinations of interest rate and real GDP at which the goods market is in equilibrium or in other words where this particular equation this y equals c plus i plus g is true no because c under our assumptions depended on y and i depended on the interest rate that means that we can use a graph with the interest rate on the vertical and with the real GDP on the horizontal axis to depict the IS curve. The derivation of the IS curve is possible using either the market for loanable funds graph or the Keynesian cross. Let us start with the loanable funds market based derivation. In the loanable funds market we have interest rate on the vertical axis and investments and savings along the horizontal axis so side by side here we can also draw the graph for the is curve and you can see that there is one common axis here namely the vertical one so let us assume that we start from a equilibrium situation in the market for goods that means that we have here a investment demand and some savings. This will then identify a certain equilibrium at equilibrium interest rate I1 and a certain upper scale I1 investment. No, that means that here somewhere along this dotted line there should be a GDP level of Y at which then the economy is in equilibrium. Now we cannot really say that what is that level but we assume that there is one level for which this is true so for example this is Y1. So we already know that this particular point must be along the IS curve. So what to do with the market for loanable funds in order to be able to derive the IS curve. Now we have to assume a change in Y. We should not use for the derivation a change in nominal interest rate because it is an endogenous variable in both graphs. So we should rather choose Y which is endogenous variable for the IS curve and see what happens if y changes for example increases to y2 so what happens then in the loanable funds market now because we chose y it is going to appear in the market for loanable funds as an exogenous change and we know that the savings in the economy equal y minus c minus g and that means that a higher level of real gdp should shift the saving curves to the right and then in the new equilibrium we should get a lower equilibrium interest rate and higher level of investment so we know that if the GDP increases in the economy then the goods market equilibrium requires a lower interest rate so this already tells us that we have here a negative relationship and this is the main lesson from this derivation namely that the IS curve is negatively sloped let us look at the alternative derivation using the Keynesian cross. No, the depiction will be a bit different because in this case we have the horizontal axis as common. 
So we put here the planned expenditure and here we put the real GDP. And here below this graph, because now the horizontal axis is common, we can put simply the graph for the IS curve. So using what we already know about the Keynesian cross, we start with an initial uh, planned expenditure and we know that here the 45 degrees line the straight line is going to give us a equilibrium level for the real output which is just y1 here now here also we can assume that this equilibrium happens at a certain interest rate rate for example i1 so this must be then one point along the is curve so now let us assume that we have a reduction in the interest rate you can see that because y was the common variable in both of the graphs i did not assume a change in y instead i used the nominal interest rate here as the variable which changes because it will be an exogenous change in the planned expenditures. So what happens if we have no a lower interest rate in the economy? And you already know what happens. We know that there will be more investment. So that means that there must be an upward shift in the planned expenditure curve and that would lead then to a higher level of real output so we know that this must then be also a point along the is curve and again we get the same result that the is curve is a negatively sloped line